How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a quick and easy video on how to set up and optimize your controller for the best performance possible and the lowest level of input latency. This works on both PlayStation and Xbox controllers, whether that be DualShock 3, 4 or the latest PS5 DualSense controller alongside the Xbox 360, Xbox One and Xbox Series controllers. Alongside some other tips, tweaks and tricks in which I can show you to get the most out of your controller on the PC, ensuring compatibility with every single game and application you're using, this is the video for you. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please leave a like on the videos, it does help me out tremendously. And do let me know of any questions, queries or suggestions for other content you'd like to see come to this channel in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel. First of all, we want to make sure that our controllers are running on the latest firmware or software available for the controller in which you are running on. For PlayStation users, you'll simply plug in the controller to the console, go ahead and power the console on with the controller plugged in wired. And if if there are any updates available, you'll be prompted to update your controller on screen now. Go ahead and follow all of the prompts until the controller firmware has successfully been updated. For those of you running on an Xbox Series controller or Xbox One controller, it's a very similar process, but we can actually do this on the PC. For this, you will also need to plug in the controller via a wire. Once you've plugged in your Xbox controller to your PC, you'll need to navigate down to the bottom left hand side, but inside of here, we're simply going to search for store. Open up inside of the Microsoft Store, we then need to navigate up to the top right hand side, and we're going to be searching for Xbox Space Accessories. Once inside of the download page, click on get this app, then click on install. Go ahead and select launch. You may be prompted to update the controller, navigate to the bottom left hand side to the three dots. Once inside of it, navigating over to the firmware version, you'll see if there are updates available for your controller. If there is an update, simply click on the version, click continue, and the update will then be applied to your controller. This should only take a few seconds. Once the update has been completed and we're back to the main page, we can then go ahead and exit out of the Xbox Accessories app. We can now move on to connecting the controller to your PC. Again, if you're connecting your controller via a wire, do so now. For those of you looking to set up your controller wirelessly via Bluetooth, to connect your controller, this time navigate to the bottom left hand side and type in Bluetooth. Navigate up to Bluetooth and other device settings. We then need to navigate over to the Bluetooth toggle switch and ensure this is switched to the on position. Once you've done that, we can then go to add Bluetooth or other device, then select Bluetooth with inside of it. This will then begin a scan of the local area for any Bluetooth devices. To get a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 controller into Bluetooth pairing mode, you need to press the PlayStation Home button and the Share button at the exact same time and hold them for around about five seconds. After holding both of the buttons, you should then see that the white lights with inside of the light bar begin to flicker. You should then see wireless input becomes available with inside of your Bluetooth search. Windows will then set up and install the device and under mouse, keyboard and pen, you should now see that you have a wireless controller connected. For those of you looking to connect an Xbox One or Xbox Series S or X controller to your PC, you'll simply press the power on button on the controller or the Xbox Home button. After a few seconds, of pressing that, navigate up to the top of the controller and press and hold the sync button. After a few short moments, the Xbox logo should begin to flash rather frequently. Navigate back over to add Bluetooth device, select Bluetooth once again. Within the search, the Xbox wireless controller or just wireless controller should be available with inside of it. Once you see this, click on this option. It should then connect the controller, select done, and the controller should then be connected to your PC. Now moving on to setting up the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 controllers. For this, you'll need to navigate inside of the description down below where you'll be finding a utility titled DS for Windows. It's important that you are using this link for DS4 Windows as this is the latest version with the latest features and updates. Navigate down to the green download now button, go to the x64 release, then double click on the zip file. We can then go ahead and drag the DS4 Windows folder onto the desktop. Once inside of it, go ahead and double click on the folder, then navigate over to ds4windows.exe. This is going to be the utility in which you're going to be using to use your PlayStation controller on your PC. Once the controller is connected to your PC, navigate to the bottom right hand side and click on start. This will then detect any PlayStation controllers connected to your PC. We're first of all going to be navigating to the top right hand side to the settings tab. You do have the option to check this and open this program on startup if you wish to do so. This means that DS4 Windows will boot up with your PC and get your controller connected without you having to do anything besides powering the controller on. Once that's done, we can navigate over to controllers. With inside of here, navigate down to your controller, go to the right hand side and click on edit. We're not going to be covering any of these options found here as the default settings with inside of this program are more than fine for everyone watching and you'll have a fantastic experience using them. First off, we're going to be going over to the touchpad section. With inside of here, go to output mode and make sure that you select this to be controls. We can then navigate over to other. The main option we're going to be using with inside of here is to navigate down to BT pull rate. If you are using your controller via Bluetooth, it's recommended to come to this drop down menu and we're going to set this to either 1000 Hertz 
or max one milliseconds, which will greatly enhance the user experience from the controller and allow your inputs to be a lot faster and more snappy. This is also where you'll find one of the most important options with inside of this entire software, under the emulated controller section. With inside of here, you'll have the option for DualShock 4 and Xbox 360. If you do run into any applications, games, other issues whilst using a PlayStation controller, you can come back with inside of the options menu, go down to emulated controller, and you can switch this over to Xbox 360. Your PC will detect your PlayStation controller as an Xbox 360 controller, ensuring 100% compatibility with all games and applications which support controller on PC. Once all of those settings have been set up, navigate up to the top left hand side to apply, then select save. Once that's done, we've now successfully set up our PlayStation 4 or 5 controller to be used with inside of Windows 10. Minimize out of the program, leave it running in the background, and you're all set. For those of you running on an Xbox One or Xbox Series S or X controller, there is not going to be much setup needed. This now leads us on to a tool in which we can use to monitor the latency of our controller, whether that be wired or wireless, before and after any and all optimizations in this video have been applied. To monitor your controller's latency, it's very simple and easy to do. Navigate inside of the description down below, find the X input polling rate checker or latency test. Simply scroll down on the web page, navigate down to the X input portable zip setup, Click on this once, the file should then be downloaded to your PC. It's recommended to drag all three of these files onto your desktop. I also like to make a quick folder on my desktop by right clicking, navigating down to new, folder, and just title this X input. We can then go ahead and drag all three of those test files with inside of this folder. What we're then going to do is make sure that your controller is connected to your PC, whether that be through Bluetooth or wired, depending on how you usually use the controller. Go ahead and boot up the X input 4000 samplesexe The program should then be able to detect that the program is ready and has detected your controller, then simply just move around the left analog stick as fast as possible. As you can see here, using my Xbox Series controller, we're getting an input of around about 29 milliseconds. Just go around in a circular motion relatively quick, and this will give you a good indication of your current input latency on your controller. So for me, that's going to be around about 29 to 30 milliseconds. What we're then going to go ahead and do is simply exit out of the X input test, and at the end of the video, we're then going to boot the program up one last time to see how much of an improvement we've been able to make. Now that we have the controller set up and running with inside of Windows configured correctly, it's now important to change a few options with inside of Windows to ensure that we are getting the best performance out of our game and the lowest level of input latency possible. For the first optimization, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, go inside of game mode settings. Navigate over to the game mode tab on the left hand side and ensure that game mode is switched to the on position. Go ahead and exit out. We're also going to be navigating down to the bottom left hand side once again and typing in GPU space settings. Then click on the graphics settings tab. With inside of here, you may or may not have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you do see this option with inside of here, navigate over and ensure that this is switched to the on position. Another important, simple optimization to apply is to ensure that you are running on the correct power plan with inside of Windows for the best performance possible. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in power space plan. Navigate over to edit power plan, navigate to the navigation bar at the top, click power options. Whether you're running on an Intel or Ryzen based CPU, it is currently recommended to be going with the default Windows high performance power plan found here. If you don't see the power plan, navigate down to show additional plans. Make sure that the option next to high performance has been selected. Once it has been, Go ahead and exit out. For my last and final optimization for both games and Windows specifically is going to come in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This program is a two-in-one optimization tool. This will help drastically lower the input latency between the hardware in your system, operating system, and the game or application in which you are using, which will result in your inputs being a lot more snappier, faster, and way more responsive. If you are interested in the program, navigate inside of the description down below, then click on ISLC. Once inside of here, simply scroll all the way down to the official download here page, click this once, go ahead and select open. If this page opens up, navigate over to the right hand side to the three dots, select desktop, select OK, extract. Double click on the folder, then double click on the intelligent standby list cleaner.exe. For the first box on the left hand side, set this to a value of 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your total system memory, in which you can see in the top left hand side. So I have 32,000, so I'm going to half that number, which is going to be 16,000. Then navigate over to the right hand side to wanted time resolution, remove this value, then put in the value of 0 0.50, then navigate down to ISLC polling rate. For lower end PCs to medium end PCs, set this to 1000, and for medium to high end modern gaming PCs, PCs, set this to 500. Then navigate up to enable custom time resolution, select start, then select purge standby list. 
Applying that simple optimization allowed me to remove 20 gigabytes of used memory from my standby list running in the background. Simply open it up before playing your favorite game, make sure that the program has started, minimize the program, and leave it running in the background. This now swiftly moves us onto the advanced low latency input tweak in which we can use for any wired controllers installed to our PC. For this tweak, you'll need to navigate inside of the description down below, navigate down to the advanced tweak link, you'll be brought to this GitHub. If you do wish to read more into what the software can do for your PC and how it applies these optimizations, you can simply go ahead and scroll down and read through this entire section found here. If you wish to download the program, navigate over to the code button, click this once, then navigate down to download zip. Go ahead and drag this on your desktop. Go ahead and double click on the folder. We're then going to be navigating to the HID USBF.zip folder. Going ahead and right clicking and extracting this folder then pressing OK. We're going to be navigating inside of the driver folder, then navigating down to setup. We're going to be navigating to the top left hand side and going down to all with inside of the drop down menu. Once inside of here, we're then going to go ahead and ensure that we then connect our controller via USB to our PC. Once the controller has been plugged in, after a few moments time, you'll notice a brand new device has become available. If you have an Xbox controller connected, this will say Xbox controller. If you have a PlayStation controller and under names, it should somewhere state that this is a wireless controller. Go ahead and highlight the device name on the left hand side. Navigate down to install service, then click on open. Once that's been done, we can then navigate over to the left-hand side to filter on device, select this option, then go to the drop-down menu. We're then going to be setting this to 1000. Once that's been set, the update for the rate should then change to 1000. We're going to simply unplug the controller, wait for the program to update that the controller is disconnected, then reconnect the controller. Once the controller has then been reconnected, you should then see that this is now running the 1000 rate as before, but the B interval should now be set to 1. That means that you've successfully completed this optimization and we can continue on. Now, if for any reason you wish to disable that optimization, it's very simple and easy to do. Once inside of the USB device's rate set up again, go to the drop down menu, select all. Make sure that your controller is plugged in that you did apply the optimization to. Navigate over to the controller, highlight the controller, unselect the filter on device section. Once that's done, we can then go ahead and select restart. Once that's been done, the B interval should change back to its default value. We're then going to select the controller once again, this time go to the drop down menu, then select default. We can then go ahead and exit out of the software and that entire optimization has now been reverted and your controller is back to stock setting. Now that all of the optimizations have been applied with inside of this video, your controller is connected and fully optimized. We're then lastly going to be going back inside of the X input program on which we downloaded earlier, navigating back inside of the X input test for 4,000 samples. Once again, moving the left side analog stick. And as you can see, we have an extremely major improvement over our stock settings of around about 30 milliseconds on which the controller was reporting, showing that all of the optimizations inside of this video have successfully been applied to your PC and are working fully. If you ever have any doubts that you are experiencing latency issues on your controller, it's always recommended to boot back inside of this program, run a quick latency test in real time to see if in fact there are any latency issues between your controller and the PC in which you are running on. And to close out the video, we're going to be going over a few quick tips and tricks with inside of Steam. If you are having any sort of difficulty running with a controller with inside of any Steam game, to go to the top right and ensure that you run Steam in big picture mode when using your controller. Right hand side to the settings cog. We're then going to go down to controller settings on the left hand side. You want to make sure that you have the PlayStation configuration support, Xbox configuration support, Xbox extended feature support. If you're using a third party or unbranded controller, check the generic gamepad configuration support. All we now need to go ahead and do is simply go ahead and select back, navigate over to library. It is recommended to boot your game through Steam Big Pictures library mode. It's also worth taking note that when you are selecting the game you wish to play, you can also see its controller support in the bottom right hand side. Valheim has limited controller support as only half of the controller is colored in. Apex Legends has full controller support and Rust has no controller controller support as it only shows up a keyboard. The only other fix I can recommend if you're still experiencing issues is to navigate inside of the manage game settings, navigate over to controller options, with inside of here set the steam input per game setting to global setting PS slash Xbox. Now that all of the controller and windows optimizations are set up and out of the way and you successfully booted into your favorite game with all of your settings configured is to take a few short moments to go through your in-game settings and ensure that you have all of the options available to you set up correctly, best performance possible, the best FPS possible, and more importantly, the lowest level of input latency. The main options you're going to be looking for in most games are going to be the display mode or full screen mode. This should always be set to just full screen. You should also be looking to disable any vSync options available to you. Simply look on the right hand side of the screen now, I've listed a bunch of options in which you should look into in every single game you play to achieve the best input latency possible. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate guide on how to set up and optimize your controller for the best performance possible and lowest level of input latency. Again guys, if you have 
have enjoyed this video please do remember to leave a thumbs up as it does help me out tremendously and if you guys do enjoy this sort of content once again please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video i've been panjano and i'll see you in the next one